If you got your Bibles this morning, very familiar scriptures, Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3, you all know this one. You're going to have a lot of scripture in this one. Um, I'm a very scriptural person. Uh, if you can't back it with the Word, ain't you getting up here and speaking it. Uh, I don't study nothing but the Word. I don't have books on my shelves and this and that. Uh, I study the Word of God. And, uh, and like I say again, I'm thankful to be here this morning. And the invitation from Doug and Mary Jane, it's an honor and privilege. Uh, it really is. Lamentations chapter 3, 22 and 23 will be your core text scriptures. 22 and 23, we all know these. We all know these. You've heard them, probably preached from them many times, but uh, very strong, powerful scriptures. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. I'll give you a moment. That's, a, that's stuck over there in Old Testament, one of them books that... Uh, they're sometimes hard to find, but I, um, my Bible's got these little marker things, and I, I know the book's pretty good, but, but it backs me up sometimes. So. And the Word of God says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you today. Lord, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love. Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit just moving in this house already this morning. We thank you for everybody that's represented here this morning, Lord. I pray for a special blessing upon them. And we thank you, Lord, for the cross at Calvary and the resurrection. And Lord, this is your service. I'm just a vessel, work here this morning, and the Holy Spirit move what you want to be heard here, Lord, what you want to be a minister, Lord, but that we apply it to our hearts, myself included, Lord, and that we just go out there, Lord, and we just let the Holy Spirit have his will and way, and great things happen for the glory of the Lord. We ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. We're going to start, and if you've, um, I started running copies of this song for all of you so you could go down through it with you, but I'm going to, each line I'm going to go down through anyway, and the first line of the song was, are you weary from the battle you're fighting? Are you weary from the battle you're fighting? In Lamentations here, uh, God is a very compassionate God. They don't fail. He can consume us because He's a consuming fire if He wanted to, but He's a merciful and He's a precious God that loves us, and He remembers that we're not perfect. He made us that way. If He made us perfect, we'd no need to even serve Him. But every day, His, uh, His mercies are new every day. And great is His faithfulness, even when we're not. But the first verse says, Are you weary from the battles you're fighting? There ain't a soul in here this morning, if you'll be honest, that ain't fighting a battle. I'm fighting battles today. I got up this morning, the devil started telling me lies. He said, You're going to go over there and you're going to fail today. You ain't going to be able to sing. You're going to wreck your car on the way over there. You're going to break down. Oh, he just tells you those things. Well, of course he is. He's evil. He's a liar. You keep listening to liars, you'll start to believe it. And what I tell him, I rebuked him. I started going to the Lord in prayer, and I said, Lord, I've got a battle here. And when I take him in my hands, I mess up. And I make a bigger mess. I'm going to give it to you. i got to go preach today. That's what you told me to do, so I'm going to go do it. But that's the thing. You're fighting a battle. Some battles are smaller than others. Some are bigger than others. But I want to tell you what. We're all going through battles. God understands that. But what did he say to do? To turn the battles to him. Put them in his hands. And you get weary. Are you weary from the battles? Are you tired? Did Corona not just wear you plumb out? That wore me out. I wasn't even afraid of it. I didn't believe in it from day one. I really didn't. I've got the vaccinations and stuff, and I don't believe in them no more. I just don't. I know people got it. They died, and they're still going to die of it. But you know what? It wore me out. You listen to something enough, and you sit around, and you can't go to church. I preached in a church Mother's Day uh, during that year with three people in there. And the Lord allowed me for a few seconds to say, now you know what your daddy and every other pastor, their congregation's out here. I'm going to let you be a pastor for about three seconds. I'm going to break your heart. It's sad. But these, they've never been through that. And these older pastors, they've never dealt with that. And they were weary in that battle. Though they have prevailed. We're getting past that. We're getting on with it. And that's the thing about it is, are you weary? But Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, what does it say? It says, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
He's rest for your soul. He's peace for your mind. You know where I find a lot of rest? Right here in this Word. It's a living Word. It's not dead. It's a living Word. Jesus is the Word. I've heard some people say, well, you need to get to know the author of the Word. Well, I hate to tell you, the author of the Word is the Word. And He's a living Word. And I love the Word because I love my Jesus. A lot of people don't understand. I, I've heard two interpretations of, well, you can't love the Word. You've got to love Jesus. I'm like, did you not go in the book of John, First John? <laughs> my favorite book in the Bible. I'm like, I've read that one a few times. <laughs> and that's the thing. Second verse says, does it seem like the storm just won't break? Hmm. What did Nahum 1 7 said? The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. That trust in him. In the storms of life, are you trusting in him? Do you believe that he's going to bring you through whatever battle you're facing? If you're sick, afflicted this morning, maybe you got financial bills. You know, we were talking about in Sunday school this morning in prayer. Prayer is the key of life. You don't have a prayer life with your father, you're not going to know much about the Lord. And if you ain't. Uh, you know, i got a big mouth, but if you don't shut up and listen, you're never going to find the answers. I'm still learning how to take this big foot and keep it out of that mouth because sometimes I want to talk when the Lord says, be quiet. I'm trying to give you something. You ever listen? When you learn to listen more than you talk, you'll get more defined answers to the Lord. You're not going to get answers from God if you don't listen. Sometimes I just say, Lord, shut my mouth so I can hear you and not me. I've heard enough of me today. And you know what? He does. He stills. In the word of Mark 4.39, you remember Jesus was out on the ship, and it says he arose and he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. In your storms of life, God promised you. He gave you an example there. Here are these disciples. They, they didn't have faith. The water's coming over in the boat. Oh, and Jesus is snoozing. Only time Jesus slept in the Bible I ever found, brother. Correct me if I'm wrong. I never found him sleeping but that one time. I believe he was snoozing. He was tired. He'd been preaching. And these disciples, well, they a little water getting in the boat. What did he do? He had to get up, rebuke the sea. And he'll rebuke the sea in your ship, in your life. If you let him, you ever see his bumper sticker that says, God is my co pilot? Is that not the dumbest thing it you've is. ever seen? That's right. That's right. If God's your co pilot, you need to switch seats. That's right. You're in the wrong Amen. seat. God is my pilot. He pilots my ship. Amen. He leads me. He guides me. Yes. Though I may walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I fear no evil because I have a God that can still rebuke the sea. I love a song, Grace Brimley songs, The Peace. Keeper. You ever heard that? Did you Jimmy Sweat? I love that song. I'm going to learn that song one of these days. I got 30 others in front of it. <laughs> so that's the problem. But if we go to the next verse. It says, is there a mountain in front of you that doubt says that will never move? Is there a doubt in front of you? I mean, a mountain that doubt just keeps the devil. Is that doubt? It keeps saying, this mountain ain't going to move. And it's been there. And you're like, Lord, why won't it move? Sometimes we want to move it our way and not his way. I've learned sometimes the mountain don't have to move. He gives me strength to climb it and get on the other side. Sometimes you got to climb the mountain. It ain't always going to move, but what did his word say? In Matthew 21, 21 and 22, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things what? So, listen, all things. He didn't say some. He said all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing. Here's the key word, believing. The faith again. you got to have faith. If you don't have faith in the one you're praying to, shut it down. Just don't even waste your time. You're wasting God's time and somebody else's time because they're trying to get a faith-believing prayer through. You're just wasting His time. If you don't believe in it, that means you put it in His hands, you let it go, and you let God. And you just keep living. And there's going to be some obstacles along the way, in your way. But what did He say? Ye shall receive. He said, I think Brother Doug this morning Sunday school, if you ask a miss for your own selfish desires and upon your lust, do um, you think God's going to give you something when you start asking selfishly? When they become lustful, fleshly, worldly, you think he's going to let you have things that he told you in his word he didn't want in your life to start with? That's a contradiction to God's word. He don't contradict. 
Simple. I told you I don't preach nothing fancy. I don't have no degree or plastic thing in my back pocket. That's all I know. And I give you things in my life that's based upon. Lord knows I failed as much as anybody. When I was a child, I gave my life to Christ. And for 30-some years, I went out. If you listen to my songs, I went out and tried it my way. My way didn't work. I was an alcoholic. I was the lowest of low. I've been all over this country traveling. I've been in most bars in America. I've been around the pagans, the angels, you name them. I've been around them all. And I've seen things I should have never been in. And by the grace of God and the prayers of my mom and daddy, and the prayers of Pine Mount Church and many other church, I'm standing here today because God said, I'll tell you what, you're getting ready to get broke. And he did. In 2016, I got broke real good. But I found my way back to the cross of Calvary. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm not ashamed of my Lord and Savior. I don't care what battles I got. He's bigger than any battle that you're going to fight. He's bigger than any doubt and fear that you may have. He said to cast those fears upon the water. Everything was formed on the waters. And I tell you what, cast them and watch what happens when God steps in. When God steps in, Matthew 17, 2021, 20, Jesus was talking to the disciples. He said, because of your unbelief. There's our biggest problem. You know what sends a man to hell? What did you say up there at Pine Mountain? Unbelief. I remember that sermon. Unbelief. That's the thing that sends you to hell. All the other sins are just sins on top of it. But that's what's going to send you to hell. And you wonder, will God make a way? You wonder, will God... What did the book of Philippians... What did God promise you? This is a promise. 419, you know this, but my God shall supply all your need, not needs, need, according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He promised you that. And He doesn't fail on His promises. He didn't say, okay, I got $100,000 worth of medical bills right now. Let's say that. It ain't hard to get $100,000 worth of medical bills these days. God, I need $100,000. You think he's going to hand you a $100,000 check? He can. Well, there's no battle in that fight. There's no lesson to be learned. There's no faith to be had. It's too easy. But all of a sudden, 1000 here, 500 here. And then that call from the insurance company, oh, by the way, we're going to work with you. We're going to knock another 2000 off. And then this happens and that happens. Before you know it, that $100,000 is zero. Zero. And he can do anything in your life. It's not a matter. But I like, here's my, one of my favorite verses. I wrote my dad's uh, Father's Day song. I sing there at Pine Mountain based upon this verse. I love this verse. I use it in a lot of different ways. John 14, 6 says, Jesus, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. Because the verse says, I wonder what God make... Jesus said, I am the way. He didn't say, I'm going to lead you along the way. I'm going to show you the way. I'm going to make, I am the way. Yes, to the Father Jesus, but He's the way in everything in life. And when you find Him, there is no other worrying about it. He's the way. He's already got it figured out for you. He knew you before you was formed, before this world was formed. He knew your problems, your trials. Do you not think when Jesus went to that cross that He didn't take coronavirus, that He didn't take cancer, that He didn't take your bills, He didn't take your tears, He didn't take your agony, your pain, everything that man would ever go through, every sin, sin, death is sin. Sickness is sin. Sin comes in so many... But you don't think that man did not know all these things and he went through every single one of them in just a few hours. Everything man on this earth would ever go through. You not think he didn't know it? You ever heard that song when he was on the cross, I was on his mind? Can you imagine what went through his mind that day? Mm, 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 mm. We can. You ever put yourself in Jesus' shoes? If more of us would, we wouldn't have the doubt and fear. He's done walked it. We just need to know the way. When you know the way, everything else becomes relevant. Then we go, tell me a time. He's not been faithful from our core text. Deuteronomy 7, 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, He is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Numbers 23 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? If he said he was going to do it right here, he's going to do it. 
If he started something in you today, he's going to finish it. Whatever he started on this earth, he's going to finish it. We're about to see it finished up here, I believe. I don't know when the day comes. He didn't tell me no more than he told you. And he hasn't whispered in my ear, Brad. It's going to be a certain day like some of these guys, Nostradamus, and some of them's already predicting, been wrong. But it's coming because if you've studied this and you know the God of the Word, you know he's about to send his son home. So we ain't got much more time. While you sit around in your agony and your defeat and your worry and this and that, remember, he's been faithful to you before. He'll be faithful again. Tell me a morning his mercies weren't new. Every day he wa- wait, you wake up. If you woke up this morning, you have a new mercy of God. He wiped the slate clean. Yesterday's behind you. Behind you. Don't worry about tomorrow. I pray for things ahead of time. If I know I'm going to go to the doctor a week from now or two, I'm going to pray today. Well, yes. But you worry about things tomorrow that you may never even happen. You know, uh, they did a statistical poll, and I'm not good on statistics, about people who worry about things that never happen. And there is like 70, 80 percent percent of things you worry about never happen. And you worry yourself into a mess. And then they don't happen. And then you're sitting there before the Lord, repenting. Lord, forgive me for the way I acted. Because what you do when you worry, you lash out. You lash out at other people. You lash out at yourself. I live alone by myself. I tell you what, I was telling my parents, I'm a hard person to live with. And up Pine Mountain, I was preaching the other week. And I said, I'm a hard person to love probably sometimes. I said, I've kicked myself out of my own house, but I keep coming back. And I was like, <laughs> but I tell you, sometimes you can make it so impossible for yourself to live with yourself. Can you imagine what everybody around you is feeling? That tension? But remember what God said. Great is thy faithfulness. Every day his, mer- every day his mercy is new. Tell me a moment that he wasn't able to carry you through. Isaiah 41.10 tells you, fear thou not. For I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And 46.4 says, And even to your old age I am he. And even to whore hairs, gray hair, I got some too. Will I carry you? I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and will deliver you to your dying day. He promised you would carry you. He'll carry you through the waters. He'll carry you through the storms, through the valleys, through the mountains. When you're praising Him in the valleys, the way you praise Him on the mountaintops, you won't realize how low your valleys really are. I pray every day, Lord, when I'm on that mountaintop, humble me in the valley. Because the valleys are coming somewhere. It's right around the corner. That storm is getting ready to face me. You won't have a storm in your life that is so overwhelming can't take it if you stop looking. Some people are just looking for stuff to happen. They're just waiting on tragedy and storms of life. They're so depressing. Some people, some Christian people, I don't want to be around. They depress me. They got every riches and heir to Jesus Christ and they act like they don't have anything. I may not have the nicest house, the nicest car. I don't care about that junk. That's junk. I got stuff that's not junk. My treasure is where my heart was the day I gave it to Jesus Christ. And when you give your heart fully to Jesus Christ, your treasures will be in heaven here on this earth. I learned that the hard way. Because I tried to close doors down and avenues and windows to the Lord when I first gave it to the Lord and thought I could do it still a little bit my way. And he said, no, remember, I'm the way. And once again, your way never worked. And I said, you got a point there, Lord. He has to remind me that quite often sometimes. And he does to some of us sometimes. But uh, tell me a day that he was less than Almighty. I love the verse, Revelation 1, he says, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is... Which was and which is to come, the Almighty. The Almighty. He's Almighty God. There's nothing too little, too small, too big for Him that He he doesn't already know. You ever afraid to take something to the Lord? Because for some reason, all of a sudden, the perfect God that made an imperfect to us, that all of a sudden, uh, His perfections cannot do everything that He said He would? You ever do that? You doubt God before you even go to Him? Say, I'm not even going to give it to Him. It's not worth it. I take everything. Everything. 
The Bible says to be instant prayer. Pray without season. I pray all through the day. It's like the sister said this morning, I live alone too and I can get in trouble. You get in trouble a lot more by yourself than you will with people. See, you can push half the blame on the people around you, <laughs> you know? But when you're by yourself, you get all the blame, so you're the only one, you can't, like, well, wait a minute here, it's just me. But that's the truth. Person alone, you got to decide when you're alone. See, devil tempts you more when you're alone. When you're alone, he'll tempt you a lot more than with people. People will help build you up. But he'll get you. And then you got the Lord over here, and you got the devil over here. Oh, he's a beautiful angel, the devil. He was. He's very beautiful. He talks it real good. He speaks it real good. Remember what I said earlier? The more you be quiet, the more you listen, the better off you are. The devil likes to talk. And he makes it sound really pretty. Oh, I'll take care of you during this storm. God's not there. He's making you wait. Why would he make you wait? Why would he make you? He loves you. Why would he make you wait on anything? If you don't wait on things, you'll never get the best God has to give you. Because God doesn't do anything fast. I see people rushing into marriages all the time. Rushing into relationships. They'll no longer get out of one bad situation. And they think they're strong enough. Well, we went to church a month or two. We gave our life back to the Lord and jumped right in the arms of somebody else. And they think that's going to work. People ask me all the time, why ain't you remarried? I think because the Lord ain't sent her yet. I don't know if she's crazy enough to live with me. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> but I told a, a preacher man who cuts my hair. He's a pastor over in Independence. You know him. Did a funeral with him here not long ago. Well, he's talking about that. He said, you ever going to think uh, you're going to be interested in seeing somebody again or something? I said, I'll put that in the Lord's hands, brother. I said, here's what I told him. I make bad decisions in that area of my life. I'm not very strong there. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to put it, if there is to be a woman in my life, because, see, I told God that I'm willing to go the rest of the way without one. You ever tell God that? That you're willing to do something? When you know deep down that you want somebody in your life, it said, Lord, she may just be a distraction at this point. She may have never been in your master plan. I don't know what your plan. I just want to follow your plan, so I'm willing to go the rest. But if there is one, you choose her, you prepare her, and you put her in there because i got work to do right now. And if she is another she trying to get in the way, you get her out of the way. You see, when you let God have full control, then you won't think of him less than the Almighty. You'll see the Almighty God working everything. There's never been a day that he couldn't roll back the tide. Think about this. Psalms 89.9 says, Thou rulest the raging of the sea. When the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. You remember over in the Old Testament, what did he do when the Israelites were crossing the Red Sea? How did he part the waters? He congealed them. You know what congealed is? He froze them. It's in Exodus. I don't know the exact verse, but he congealed those waters. He froze them to get them through there. If he can do that, a sea, think about that. Take that and congealing a tunnel, basically, for them to get through. You don't think your God can't roll back your little tide in your life and push it away? You don't think that? There's been times I've been down, depressed, even as a child of God. I've laid a many night upon my pillow, and I'm like, God, where you at? Tears in my eyes that he's bottling up because he said he would. And sit there like, Lord, I know you're here. And I just start calling out. And I'm like, I don't even have words to pray. I've written a lot of songs on nights I couldn't even pray. I wrote a worship and pray song called Feel Your Love tonight because I couldn't even pray. I said, Lord, I can't even pray. I said, I don't want to sing. He said, get your guitar. I said, I don't want to sing tonight. He said, get it. <laughs> and when he says, get it, you get it. And I wrote a worship and pray song. And I sing my prayer to him through that song. I had to pray through song. There's so many ways to pray. That he can roll back the tides in your life. Child, when you look back, you're nev there's never a time that you're going to find that he wasn't there. Second verse says, So be strong in the Lord. And remember, Ephesians 16 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Put on the full armor of God. We're fighting battles out there today, folks. And it ain't getting no easier. You're going to see a persecution, I believe, of the church that you've never seen before. And your battles are going to get a lot more and worse. We're going to be fighting now. 
and we're going to be fighting. You know, I'm all for the government doing what the Lord tells me, but there's going to be times we're going to get on our knees and say, God, just like old Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Bendigo, remember those stories? We're going to have to do what God wants, regardless of what the government says. I'm not turning on the government. I'm all for the police officers. I stand by the boys in blue. I couldn't do their job. Thank God we have people that does that. I don't believe in defunding police officers. I don't. God put them in position for a reason. He put judges in. I want to tell you what, there's bad ones of those too. It's not for us to pass judgment on them. It's us to pray for them. To pray for them. We talked about prayer in the Sunday school this morning. Prayer, 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 prayer. You can't go wrong with talking to the Lord. You can talk to yourself to your blue the face and somebody. You can talk to me, Pastor Doug, whoever. But we don't have all the answers. Sometimes we think we do. <laughs> this guy thinks sometimes I get people work. They see old preacher boy over. Oh, let me go over and ask him. You know, sometimes they'll stump me. I say, you know what? I don't have the answer. But God does. That's right. I will just put it in his hands. That's all we can do. To take hold of faith and stand firm. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says, Watch ye stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. If your faith is not strong, you said a mustard seed will move a mountain. Think about how small that mustard seed is. That's not much faith, folks. God ain't, He's not commanding you to do much. Faith is a mustard seed. He didn't say the size of a stone. He said a mustard seed. Can you not have faith in God that much to get you through whatever you're going through right now? Can you not? You can be confident the Lord keeps His promises. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, For all the promises of God in Him are yea, and in Him amen, and to the glory of God by us. He don't make you a promise. Roundabout's about 700 promises in that word. Roundabouts. I don't know the exact figure. I got that wrong. 700 commandments. Eight, eight, over 8,000 promises. I get those. The 700 and some commandments. 8,000, 8, folks, promises in His word. 8,000 promises to 700 commandments. Think about that. He only commanded you 700 some times, but He gave you promise behind Him. Now see, the promises of God is not always what we want. It's what we need. He said, I promise you I'll never leave you and forsake you. That don't mean you're not going to ever feel lonely in life, but He's there. I was out in the grass last night. Doug had invited me the other Friday night, and I wished I could have come to you, Jubilee, because I love music jams. I love that. And I just had some things I had to get done around the house, and I was cutting some brush and stuff with a chainsaw, and I took my blade off, and I was doing some, putting the blade back on. I had a little nut on it, and I laid it in the grass, and I couldn't find it. I'm blind. I can't see by these eyes. And I was sitting there feeling around, and I was looking, and I said, Lord, help me. Could I ask him for everything? And he spoke to me right there. He said, how do you find things with the Holy Spirit? You feel it. Don't look for it with your eyes. Reach down there and feel it. And I started feeling, and I felt that nut in the grass. It, was, it had fallen down in there. He said, you got to feel things. He was reminding me sometimes, something's coming. you got to feel it. Feel it. It's like a wind. Sometimes it's strong. Sometimes it's real silent. Feel it. And I found it. I couldn't see it, but I felt it. I could even feel it physically. You can feel the Holy Spirit physically, mentally, emotionally, any way. And he reminds you sometimes in the awkwardest moments. And he was right there. And I went out there and I was just throwing that chainsaw. I tell you what, if you could have put a camera on me and I was just sitting there and listening to some music, if you could have seen that saw going, it, people around me is probably like, that boy's going to cut his head off in a minute. But I gave the Lord that chainsaw before I went out there. And that old thing was probably dull and everything, trying to cut through some of them uh, uh, trees. And I was cutting stuff. I don't even know if it needed to be cut. But I got happy in the Lord, and I was like, we're going to cut. And I looked up, and there was a branch in my crab apple tree had fallen over in the pine tree, and I didn't notice that. He said, cut it. And I was like, yeah, let's cut it. And I was just cutting left and right, and I was having a good time in the Lord. You can be confident the Lord will keep his promise. He's not a Lord to lie. He loves you. He will never leave you. If you doubt him, just read through his word. Now, how easy is that? 
How often, let me ask you something this morning. How often in a day do you open this up? Okay, take your TV remote in one hand and this in the other. How many hours do you give to God in this compared to this? I don't watch TV. I cut it off two years ago in my house. I have not missed it. That wasn't sacrifice. That was obedience. God didn't tell me to, but I would obey God better with that TV off, and I have not missed it. I go over to somebody else's house sometimes. They get it on, and I get aggravated with it. I have to get up and walk out sometimes. I can't stand it to be on. I'm not saying it's a sin to watch TV, but it is when you give more time to that TV than to this. This is your guide. This is your comfort. It's your peace. This is your hope. Because Jesus is the Word. If you start to doubt God, open it up. And say, Holy Spirit, teach me that Word. You don't pray before you study this thing, it ain't going to do no good. you got to, it's spiritually discerned. Sinner man can't understand this. I love these sinners that come up to me and want to teach me the Word of God. See, I won't give him much. The Bible tells me not to give the breadcrumbs to the dogs. Have I ever studied that? You don't give a sinner man too much. He'll take it and use it against you. And they get aggravated. This preacher man won't preach back. Oh, I'm going to preach the gospel. And that's all you're going to get. You want to hear me preach, be on Sunday morning in the church, wherever I'm going to be. That's where you'll get it. Or go to your local church. But I ain't going to give you much because you'll take it and try to use it against me. That's what the devil will do. They'll turn it and twist it like the devil does. That's why you've got to know it. Because people, what do they do? You think about when the devil tempted Jesus over Matthew. Now think about this. Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He took Psalms, what was it, 91 I think it was, and he twisted the scripture. When he's talking about having the angels take charge over him. He twisted, he told Jesus to basically commit suicide to jump. That the angels will catch you. Jesus got more sense than that. And that man was at the weakest point. He was hungry, he was tired. And the devil will twist him on you. But they'll sound good enough to believe. Jesus didn't believe it. He gave us an example there, right there. He can work miracles. Mm, 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 mm. I don't know how many miracles Jesus has done in the history. Only He knows. But He's still working on them today. And I think we forgot that God is still able to perform miracles. When you come down here and pray this morning, did you believe that a miracle was going to happen? We want that instant gratification, that instant, I want that healing right now, Lord. He said we would suffer in this life. He would have pains and we'd have sorrows. That's the test of life. That's the test because only a few is going to get in. He's testing to see who really wants to go to heaven. He's testing you for the next Think about life like this. It's a lot of pop quizzes leading to that one big test. You're going to have pop quizzes every day, and you're going to have a big test. But he's there. He was already there. And if you keep failing the same test over and over and over, you're never going to get there. You wonder why things don't come into your life or happen or your spiritual growth or maturity? Because you're not allowing God to move in his will, way, and timing. You think I don't get depressed? I was supposed to preach over for a brother the other week, and he got his dates mixed up. A good man, he's from Wilkes County, North Carolina, pastor's church in Speedle. Love Brother Jerry, love him. And he, he was going on vacation, and he got his dates mixed up. I was supposed to preach. They called me and said he got his dates. We're going to cancel. I got depressed. I had a sermon ready for those folks. I had songs ready. That was God testing me. Things are going to happen, Brad. It ain't always peaches and cream. And I did. I got down. But you know what? I started thinking, that's all right. Another door is coming open. And I knew I had this scheduled, and I knew there was more coming. And that's all right. He said, you just keep working on why. Sometimes we want instant gratification. We want to do it our way. We want to sing that song, the song this right here. When I first learned this song, it wasn't going to happen. I almost give up on it because I was like, Lord, this is just not in my range. He said, we'll make a range. When the Holy Spirit and I started praying, got up on my voice. Started playing that song, I started learning it the way he wanted me to. And I started hearing it. I had to hear it. When I write a song, I have to hear it. You gotta take it. I understand King David, how he wrote songs. I believe that man wrote in a cave. I've said that before, because I believe I just believe he was a cave dweller. I really do. And I believe he wrote a lot of songs in a cave. And I got a cave, it just ain't made of rock. It's made of wood <laughs> and other things. 
But try putting things in His hands and leaving it there for once. You ever do that? Just leave it there. And it, you'll find out it doesn't take as long for God to move when you leave it. When you keep taking it out over and over and over and over and over again, what happens? You have to start all over again. You get nowhere. You don't think you don't frustrate God sometimes? He's like, I brought you this far, and this is where you're at. John 16, says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. This world is under subjecting to us because we have the Holy Spirit. Demons will be subjected to us. The Bible says that. You ever back somebody down in the Spirit? I do it all the time. Because if I did it in my spirit, we'd be in these kind of back downs. I don't want to do that no more. You ever be in the Spirit of the Lord and back somebody down? They come at you? Let the Holy Spirit put them, put them in their place real quick. And then they're, they're sitting there looking at you with their heads bowed low. There's demons in people. They're evil out there. There's demons in churches this morning. Because people brought them in. There's Christians. You can't have a demon possession if you're a Christian, a child of God. But you can bring the devil in the church with you. Because he'll work through a Christian too if you allow him. That's what's wrong with our churches today. We're divided. The Bible says we are one united body in Christ. One body. I don't care about your church of God, Pentecostal, homeless, Methodist, Baptist, whatever you are. We get to heaven, those credentials will not get you in. Your theology and doctrine of man, God is not going to well evaluate that. Well, your theology, God doesn't care. He gave you one theology and doctrine. He said to live by it. Right. Stand on it. I can take that and I can stand on His Word. Man's Word will lead me astray, right. will lie to me, will cheat and steal. But God will promise and stand on them. And I can stand on His promises. That's where we are today, folks. We got so many burdens. We got so many mountains. We got so many doubts. We got so many fears. We got so much going on in our lives. And we let it pile up. And it just keeps piling and piling and piling and piling. If you let your house get dirty and you let your laundry stack up, you're going to be in a stinky, nasty mess and that's what you're going to live in the rest of your life. I'm using that as an example as your spiritual life. If you let your laundry pile up and you let your stinkiness pile up and your old evil thoughts and ways and this and that, that's going to interfere with everything else and you're going to have more burdens than what you ever asked for. And they're not going to go anywhere because you're not going to give them to God because you're going to sit there and keep letting them pile up because you think suddenly you've got enough spirit in you to do whatever you need to do and make it right. Let go and let God. There was never a time, as the song title, love it, there was never a time. You hear this morning, you don't know Jesus Christ, there was never a time better than right now. There's a time in a service when the Spirit draweth near. And no man come unto the Father except drawn by the Holy Spirit. All things are received in, by heaven. Heaven gives them down. God gives them. You ain't going to just get saved whenever you want to. You ain't going to just go out there and, well, I think I'll be saved today. Oh, no, 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 no. If the Holy Spirit has been on your heart, I don't know your hearts. I don't know some of you. And the Holy Spirit's been drawing you, get down here this morning. Why are you even listening to me preach? Get down here on this altar. There's no stop and go. You don't know when your last breath is gone. I drive an 18-wheeler for a living. I've done it for 23 years. And I pray to God every day, Lord, I've been blessed to be able to do that. And it's getting scarier and scarier and scarier out there on the highway. There's more trucks, more cars, more accidents, more deaths. And I have to pray. And I pray. I see women got little babies in the back of their car and they're texting, going down there. I like, Lord, take their wheel. Take their wheel. They're so ignorant to sit there. That child, sit there in that car, has, no, has nothing, no control over that whatsoever. And people just doing that. And I was like, God, take the wheel, take the wheel, take the wheel of this truck driver. He's falling asleep. We see that. I just start praying for him. And God protects me. He puts just a shield around me. You know, I've never had not one accident in 23 years. I've traveled this country, all over the country. I've been out of country, Canada before. The rig. I've never had one accident on this highways. That's God. And most of those years, I didn't know the Lord. I had a mom and daddy on their knees. They, <laughs> thank God I had them on their knees and a lot of other family members. There's never a time better than right now. If you've got a problem this morning, we will pray with you. There's no 
12 o'clock, 1 o'clock time, says this and that, whatever. I get so sick of people saying, well, we've got to, like he was talking this morning formally, well, we've got to do this at this time, or we've got to do this. Take your agendas, crumble them up, pitch them out the window, light a match to them, and forget them. This is God's time, His house, His will, His way, we're His children, and He gets what He wants. And if you don't get what He wants in this house, you're going to walk out feeling empty, as you did when you come in. That's just the truth. You ever left church feeling empty? You shouldn't because you didn't submit to the will of God. If you was hurting just a little bit, if you had a headache, get down here. He's going to cure that headache. He may say, take a Tylenol. Come on, I put it out there for a reason. You see people ever throw their medicines away? I, just got off the, I was diagnosed with diabetes in September, my DOT physical of last year. I always will be a diabetic. They will never change that. Well, I've been called worse. I'll take it. But my goal that day, I said, Lord, I was overweight. 300 and some on the stick, 9.6 A1Cs. I was getting up there on the insulin level. Should have been probably. They put me on the pills, 1,000 milligrams twice a day. I said, Lord, I went off that pill because I started reading about it. It was crucial. It was going to eat my kidneys up, and it was just not good for you. Week before last, I'm off that pill completely in that short of time. I didn't say, God, cure me of diabetes. I didn't say, God, this, that, whatever. I said, I want off that pill. Because I'm going to go back to that doctor who gave me a DOT physical that told me that the pill would prolong my life. And I told her I done put it in God's hands and she wasn't listening. And I'm going to walk in when she gives me that physical. And I hope and pray she's the one that does that day. And I'm going to say, Jenny... I'm not on that pill because God said I didn't have to be. He's a God that's right on time. Yeah. He's always on time. He, he, he's there when you think that nothing, all else can't fail. Here he comes. He saves the day. He's my superhero. But I got off that pill in that short of a time. You think about that. And that was God. Was there struggles? Yes. We went to Shelly Springs and took my daddy out last week. I'll tell you what happens though. When you ask God to help you, I, I say keep it fresh every day. You know how I'm out on diets, Lord. You know I start off good, but I don't finish well. So he had to keep it fresh. So we went to Shatley Springs, and I got a double portion. I just got off the pill, and I was so happy and know you. Monday morning, my sugar went up. I'm talking about it went up. I got sick. He said, don't go back to what I brought you out of, boy. That's how quick God worked. He said, don't go back to what I just brought you out of. You're off the pill. So next time I go to Shelly Springs, we get one portion and we get up and walk away. <laughs> I didn't need two chicken breasts. I didn't need two biscuits with egg gravy. I didn't need. It just looked appetizing. And it's those things God does all the time. Your finances may be low right now. I tell you what, you ain't never going to have enough money in this world. Because there's always going to be a man raise the price on something. My dad's a used car dealer. And used cars right now are hot. One of the hottest things on the market. You can buy a new car cheaper than you can use almost. I just read an article this morning. The bottom is getting ready to drop in the used car business because it's, go, it's going to drop 30% here. It's always going to be ups and downs like that finances. You ain't going to buy your way to heaven or your way out of hell. God will provide for you. If you got a piece of bread, a piece of meat on the table, and a few vegetables, you're blessed because some people don't. If you got, you don't mean no difference of what color suit I wear. If I got a pair of old holy jeans on and a t-shirt, I ain't gonna preach it no difference to you. That's right. If you got clothes on your back, you're blessed. If you got a roof over your head, you're blessed. I've seen the homeless in these streets. I've been to the big streets of America. I've seen these people. They're sad. It's pitiful. And you know, you can sit there and say, "Well, it's their own fault." No, it wasn't always their fault. Everybody didn't have what you had growing up. Everybody didn't have that. I was blessed to have a mom and dad that worked hard, that taught me the Word of God. Some people was never taught the Word of God. And if you don't have that in your home, you don't have anything. And that's what's wrong with our homes today. The Word of God is not allowed. And it's not allowed in some of the churches. And the Holy Spirit, if you was to lift the roofs on some of these churches this morning, the Holy Spirit and take it out, they wouldn't know the difference because they don't submit to it. And they don't understand because the Holy Spirit's not into them. They go through a formality, formality worship. And they don't live it daily. And they don't care. Folks, there is never a time in the day that you need God for everything. 
I give you a simple by song this morning. I won't ever stay my welcome. But I want to tell you something. If you're here this morning, you make a decision to go to heaven or hell, not your pastor, not your mama, not your daddy. You can't do it for them. You're doing it for yourself. You are your own worst enemy by what you do and you don't do in this life. Don't blame everybody else. Don't blame the devil for your problems. It's a loud temptation. You fall into it. If you take it, if you're like a fish and you take the bait and hook, you'll fall into it. You'll be hooked. It's a loud temptation. And God will never allow you to be tempted no more than what you can handle. He promised you that. If you got something this morning, we will come. I'm not going to do the altar call because I respect, just like he respects my, I respect Brother Doug. I'm going to let him do it. But I will beg you. I won't beg you for nothing. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, I'll get on my knees and beg you. Because yes. there were so many times I should have been in hell burning. And I felt hell on this earth right before, through my divorce, I almost committed suicide with a bottle. I was drinking so much, I was going to die. And one day I had to come to a conclusion. God said, it's either me or tell, because that's where you're going to be. I remember that night. I was in my own home. I left church from Pine Mountain that Sunday morning in a conviction. I got to my house, and I couldn't make it another week. I knew I was going to go to hell. You won't never really reach heaven until you realize you deserve nothing but hell. By the grace of God. Amen. Grace of God. And only His grace will you be saved through faith in Jesus. If you don't know Jesus this morning, get up here. If you're a second question that you have anything, get up here and make it right. If you've got a burden, a doubt, a fear, anything. Think, get up here. Amen. This is God's time, and yes. He's ready to heal you. Yes. He's ready to move here this morning. He already has. He's got miracles just piled waiting, but you've got to come and receive.